gold, silver and platinum have been used to make ornaments and jewellery for thousands of years. Mercury is used in thermometers to check body temperatures. Copper is used for making electrical wires that are widely used domestically as well as industrially. Metals such as copper, silver, gold and platinum are the least reactive metals present at the bottom of the reactivity series. How are these metals extracted? Let's talk about them. In nature, metals such as mercury and copper are found in free state as well as in the form of their sulphide ores. Let us first look at how mercury is extracted. Cinnabar or mercury 2 sulphide is a principal ore of mercury. The extraction of mercury from cinnabar consists of two steps. In the first step, concentrated cinnabar ore is heated at a high temperature in the presence of air. This process is called roasting. In this process, mercuric sulphide is converted into mercuric oxide with the liberation of sulphur dioxide gas. The mercuric oxide thus formed is then strongly heated to reduce it to mercury metal. Oxygen gas is also released during this step. Similarly, copper metal can also be obtained from copper sulphide by simply heating in air. Let us learn about the extraction of copper from its sulphide ore, copper glands. The process involves the following two steps. The concentrated copper glands is heated in the presence of air. The oxygen in the air reacts with the copper sulphide to form copper oxide and sulphur dioxide gas is released. When a significant amount of copper sulphide is converted into copper oxide, the supply of air for roasting is cut off. The copper oxide thus formed reacts with the remaining copper sulphide to form copper metal and sulphur dioxide gas. The metals thus obtained after reduction are generally impure and must be purified. Electrolytic refining is a common method for refining impure metals. Let's discuss the process of electrolytic refining of copper metal. In an electrolytic tank, acidified copper sulphate solution is taken as the electrolyte. An impure block of copper is connected to the positive terminal of the battery and it serves as the anode. A thin strip of pure copper is connected to the negative terminal of the battery and it serves as the cathode. When an electric current is passed through the solution, the impure copper at the anode dissolves into copper sulphate solution. At the same time, pure copper gets deposited on the cathode. Let's take a look at the reactions that occur during this process. The electrolytic solution contains copper and sulphate ions. At the anode, copper atoms lose two electrons and form copper ions. These ions enter the electrolytic solution. Do you know what happens at the cathode? At the anode, copper atoms lose two electrons and form copper ions. These ions enter the electrolytic solution. Do you know what happens at the cathode? During electrolysis, positively charged copper ions move towards the cathode and accept electrons to produce pure copper metal. As the process continues, the thickness of the impure anode decreases, while the thickness of the pure cathode increases. Now, the question arises, what happens to the impurities present in the impure metal at the anode? Impurities that are soluble dissolve into the solution while the insoluble impurities settle down at the bottom of the anode in the form of anode mud. Anode mud may contain gold and silver metal as impurities that can be recovered separately. As a result of electrolytic refining, pure metal is obtained. Let's recall what we have learned. The majority of metals with low reactivity occur as free elements in the Earth's crust and some less reactive metals can also be found in nature as sulphide ores. Less reactive metals such as copper and mercury can be extracted from sulphide ores by heating in the air in two steps. In the first step, the sulphide is converted to metal oxide which is then reduced to metal by further heating in the second step. The metals are then purified by electrolytic refining.